so you created the show, you write the show, you star in the show. It's about a group of female friends in New York. You live in New York, you have female friends here. Uh, I'm assuming they must know to some degree that the show is based on them. Are they aware of that? Well, it's based on a specific type of mom bot, and it's not really about parenting, it's more about keeping up, but that subset of women, I don't roll with. I have very down gotcha. friends. I only have five friends, and they're all really normal. Okay. <laughs> I think if you only have five, you might be the one that's not that normal, yeah. <laughs> but do they, do you, do you sense that they're ever censoring themselves when they tell you a story, as if, if they say it, it'll be on TV? No, okay. they all know that we are all the vault and we can know when to oh, that's good. for, it's for a the nice, show. It's a nice or, safe place. Yeah. Do people from outside your circle, people you, strangers, come up and pitch ideas for the show? All the time, in bathrooms, everywhere. So, and I love it, because it makes me happy that it's relatable and they feel like they're living it, but people... And do you think, it, does that mean that there are more people that think they're outsiders? Because you play someone who's an yeah. out, identifies as an outsider in the show. Do you feel like that's maybe... That, that's what I love about it, is that relatability. But sometimes they look like Barbie dolls, and they're like, I'm you. And I'm sort of like, are you? But then, <laughs> but then, but then it's really how you feel. It's not about how you look. But all the time, people come up and be like, "You have to put this in your show." I was at my daughter's friend's bus mitzvah, and my zipper got stuck in the bathroom. You have to put it in your show. And I'm like, I'll get right on that. <laughs> that is must see TV, honey. Thank you. What? Where? Give me your name and address so I can send you your check. Yeah. Um, you also, though, I mean, it's a hyper-specific New York show, but you have mentioned that you have people from outside the city. Like, this show, what, the, what you're talking about, the idea of keeping up, especially that mom pressure to be uh, perfect in every way, shape, or form, is something that everyone in this country feels. It's so true. And when I was traveling for my book last year, I met all these women across the country. And, you know, New Yorkers are kind of solipsistic about if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere, and it's so doggy dogs, metropolis. And, in fact, in the, some of the smaller satellite cities, the women said, it's actually worse here. And I was like, really? And they said, yeah, you know, we have one school and one supermarket, and you see your mother-in-law every day. And in New York, it's anonymous. I mean, we, we have the luxury of kind of moving as we want. And my friend said, oh yeah, someone said to me, I saw your car in Caroline's driveway. I didn't know you were that close. <laughs> and I was like, that is my nightmare. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's true. We, we are very, it's very easy to be anonymous here if you want to get away. Um, you, uh, I also want to ask about your writing staff because you have some people that do not have a background in writing. You went out and got consultants. You hired an ER doctor from Manhattan. What would your show need with an ER doctor in the writer's Well, room? my best friend on the show, Vanessa, who's named after my real best friend, Vanessa Eastman, um, the character is a doctor on the ER and we just figured there would be a lot of rich people accidents. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we had a doctor come in and we, you know, he didn't name names, so he wasn't breaking the HIPAA oath or whatever. So he just told us about these people, particularly after the Madoff pyramid scheme, who had to lay off their staffs and they were, you know, somebody... Oh, so people who spent their whole lives with the full staff yes. who all of a sudden... and they, their burn unit was, like, maxed out from people using their oven for the first time. And <laughs> this guy, like, pulverized his hand making his own smoothie. <laughs> and another woman had an iron-shaped burn because she tried to iron a dress on herself. <laughs> So they, he came in and did like a story vomit and we used it all. It was so oh good. God. You can't, there are things that writers can't come up with. No, it's true. Well, you would feel, it would feel hacky if you pitched it, but then right. if somebody told you it actually happened, oh, no, it you'd be real. like, oh great, then that's good, great. definitely in going in. In that case, in. yeah. yeah. Uh, you were on Wendy Williams' show and then you had Wendy Williams uh, do a guest spot on your show. I had Wendy here, I've been on her show. She's the most fun person to she be really near. Is. Around, did you enjoy your time with Wendy Williams? I Wendy loved it. She's just this infectious, amazing, energetic person. She cracked me up. We had so much fun on the show. I can't wait for. And you to when see you it. asked her to do it, did she say right away? Yeah. Well, yes? I, I was waiting to hear because they were on hiatus, and I was sweating because we wrote the part for her. No one could have done it except for Wendy Williams. So she was such an early supporter of Odd Mom Out. So it was just felt very like the circle of life. <laughs> It was wonderful. Uh, I want to ask about your parents. Uh, I met your mom backstage, absolutely lovely woman. Uh, your, is this a birthday tradition for your father that, he, that is a little different than other fathers? <laughs> well, in the last couple years. Okay. Last year, we happened to be um, in Massachusetts where he's getting buried. He uh, bought the land. Okay. Um, my parents uh, are he's very organized. Fine, he's right? fine. Okay. 
perfectly healthy. Just wants to get ahead of the game. I said, Daddy, what do you want to do today? And we had this brunch, and he was like, I would like to show you the grave site. So I took a picture. Is your dad by nature morbid? Very. My okay. parents are so morbid. I, they toured cemeteries the way normal people tour colleges. But I will say, <laughs> this is a photo of them at a cemetery. They don't look morbid. They look really happy. Yeah. We're happy people. There's like our area. Gotcha. Um, my dad said, my dad said, it's such a great spot and we just really have the best view. I was like, Daddy, you're dead. <laughs> the best view. The, the, the thing is, though, you never know about construction. One day it's the best view and then someone builds a giant tombstone. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Um, well, I like how happy they are about it. I want to be this happy when I think about my future as well. Yeah, um, well, his 79th birthday is coming up, and we're getting tattoos together. What are you getting? Uh, what are you? Are I'm you just getting, matching tattoos? I'm getting, no, I'm getting the word odd. Okay. In, like, New York Times font. Like, I have New York on my back. And he's getting four hearts, two red, two black for my mom and my brother and me. That's unbelievable. Yeah, uh, this first is, is that his first tattoo at yes. 79 years old? Yes, we're going to Mr. K, who did my Inigo Montoya sword. That's fantastic. This guy's living it up. Yeah. Let's go pick out a tombstone, totally. get a tattoo. I'm flying yeah, high. He's doing it all. Uh, thanks so much for being here, Jill. Always a Thank pleasure you. to see you. Congrats on season three.